Hey fellow Vault Dwellers, it's Angry Tartle. And before we jump straight into the video, I have some new patrons and I want to welcome them. It's Kuden, Chris Yeager, M. Stewart, Robbie Warnock, and a backlogged gamer. I truly appreciate your support, guys. Welcome into Tartus Army. Thank you. And now, in this video, uh, we will be talking about farming experience with a focus on solo gameplay, as I promised. And first, let's start from preparation, because we are just a couple days before double experience weekend that will be very important as level ups are going more and more important and first thing first preparation uh, the best way to get your sleep buff is your camp and you need your companion if you are friendly with your companion it will give you buff for three hours as you can see lovers embrace three hours plus five percent experience that's the easiest one you just sleep in your bed now, before you will start crafting and farming ingredients, don't forget about those important perks. Super duper, to get twice as many. Chemist, when you'll be crafting your berry mentas, to double it up. And, as important as everything else, if you want to stockpile your food, like cranberry relish, then you want good with salt, as you do not want to farm food during the double experience weekend, you want to use it and optimize your experience gain. And you, you want to prepare everything beforehand. Green thumb, when you will be go after those veggies and fruits. Now, cooking. Uh, you need to prepare two very important things. First, intelligence booster. It can be brain bumps. Uh, that you need brain fungus, muffman egg, purified water, sugar bumps, and wood to craft. But there is easier way to get plus free intelligence buff. That's a broiled scorch beast brain. Basically, to make this one, you just need to kill scorch beasts across the map, take their brains, and cook it. Now, if you don't have time to farm either of those, just grab some brain fungus boiled water and make yourself brain fungus soup. Just one less intelligence. It still gives two intelligence. And for those of you that believe that intelligence doesn't increase experience, it does increase experience. And you can test it yourself because I already proved it a couple times. Then I will not in here. Next, you do not want to make cranberry cobbler unless you're running out of time. Then make this one. If you have time, you want to do cranberry relish. And I will not include in here a full guide how to get the ingredients because there is multiple already on YouTube unless there will be like really a lot of question about crafting all the all this stuff then I will do separate video I don't want this to be extremely long then you want to craft your cranberry relish now from the chems category you want berry mentats this stuff is craftable under drugs and you can see requirements, you need brain fungus, firecracker berry, regular mentats, and starlight berries. This is very important camp because it boosts your intelligence by five. By far the most efficient intelligence boost and it's stuck with your food boost, like broad scorch's brain, for a total of eight intelligence. And you need a lot of those because you will be popping them every five or ten minutes. And as well, I heard some opinions that Excel can stack with berry mentats. That's not actually true. If you use them both, it will show that Excel is active, but actually only boost from Excel or berry mentats will be applied to your intelligence. The one that you used the last. Then you don't want to use Excel. Now let's quickly apply those buff. As keep in mind, you want berry mentats, broad scorch with brain, or brain bumps, cranberry relish. If you are lucky enough to buy somewhere or find bubblehead leader, use this one as well. As well, it, it does stack with other experience boost. Then you can use it on top of everything. If you have bubblehead leader, use it. Just a quick mention: live and love number eight can stack with everything else, but it's only for people playing on the team. 
and even though it's a single single player focus if you will end up on a team don't forget to equip your inspirational perk card and now let's take a look on those buffs from berry mentats you will have five intelligence and as well it highlights living target that's important because it means you will find them faster kill them faster that's additional bonus to your experience gain bubblehead leader it will give you 5% to your experience for one hour. Lover's Embrace from sleeping in your bed. It will give you plus 5% experience for one hour. Broid Scorchby's Brain. It will boost your intelligence by plus 3 for 30 minutes. Cranberry Relish will boost your experience gain by 10% for 57 minutes. And that's are your recommended buffs to use while farming experience as efficiently as possible. Now about the gear you want to use, you are aiming for unyielding armor set. That's the best option out of everything. If you don't have unyielding set, whatever gives plus one intelligence will help. If you want to use your power armor, although it's usually not recommended as unyielding is much better, just don't forget that you can modify your helmet with data based, what means it will boost intelligence by two. It's always something. And apart from that, you want to use easily accessible shielded vault jumpsuit that will give you plus two to your intelligence. Or even better, if you have access to shielded casual under armor, it will give you plus three to intelligence. Now, if you want to save on Barry Mentats and you have room under endurance, you can use Chemfend. To increase Berimenta duration by 100% would mean they will last for 10 minutes. As well, there is an option to put a Biocom Mesh on most armor torso pieces to increase it by additional 50%. Unfortunately, I like my jetpack and I will be using jetpack, not the Biocom Mesh. And just a handy tip, because you will be using Berimenta's frequently every 5 or 10 minutes, uh, then you won't really to have it on your quick wheel. This will allow you to keep popping it up while farming without opening your pip boy every time. And now even though my base intelligence is rather low, thanks to all those tips and tricks, my intelligence is boosted up to 36, what's quite a lot and will help leveling up greatly. Now where to go for your level ups? I was trying to find a lot of good places. Unfortunately, like at this moment still, number one is West Tech and this place you can be sure it will be overrun by players on adventure servers just because of how good it is. If you have private server then you are a winner because you can constantly farming this West Tech. Then another good place is for super mutants and why super mutants you will ask? Just because they are giving so much more experience than any other mobs. Just with those boosts, it's not double experience weekend yet, but I will show you how much experience you can get. And I was frequently asked about this purple glow. It's not the mod. Those are Berry Mentats. It's how Berry Mentats work. You see, 256 experience. This guy, 352. This guy, 352 as well, because it's high level is 352. 256 for lower level, with all the boost applies, of course. And... Doggo are not worth too much. Level 60 is it's 68 is the one. 352 experience. And it will be double up during this weekend. Then you will get much more. And in this place, there is a lot of those super mutants. In total, on my count last time I was running through, there was 12 outside and 32 inside. Then it was total of 44. In the past, it was even more just because now we have more doggos instead of super mutants. That's why the number dropped down a little bit, but it's still number one spot. Then other, other good places when you can find super mutants, usually around 12 of them in Huntersville and in National Isolated Radio Array, it's like nine or 10. And those three are close together for super mutants. Uh, I was doing on the live stream test how much experience I will get from different creature, different creatures and super mutants with 15 intelligence without any other buffs were giving me 223 for 
level 68 and 163 experience for level 48. For comparison, on the second place we have ghouls, high level ghouls, and this is only 140 experience for level 62 ghoul. Blood eagles, I was thinking if we can farm blood eagles in Watoga Underground, unfortunately there is not so many of them, there is 30 of them and experience was 136 per level 66 blood eagle, what means lower than ghouls. And ghouls can be nuked to get more experience. The ghouls that are nuked are glowing and give 175 experience each and every single one of them will be the same, what's mean glowing ghouls are the biggest competition for super mutants. And what you can do, I was doing research, and barrows are the great spot if you want to use a nuke. How you nuke? You basically drop nuke low just to get the barrows south. Therefore, you can freely fast travel to barrow north. It does not need to be in the nuke zone. You leave this out outside and you nuke this one. Then you can go to barrows north, get inside without dealing with any radiation. There will be no radiation inside, but the ghouls inside will be glowing. What's meant you will have 75 ghouls to kill over there. There is 75 ghouls in there. If you don't know where they are, you should check this place now and be ready for double experience weekend if you want to use nukes for your advantage. If you are using power armor, still number one spot for nuke is golf club and area around the white spring. You basically drop a nuke uh, just to the left from the Y Spring station in the way to not hit the station as you will use it as fast travel spot and then you clear all this area. There's a lot of ghouls. Golf club itself without counting anything else it's 30 ghouls. And now it was a spot that I was thinking it will be very promising Charleston Capitol building. Unfortunately I don't know what happened in the past it was working you cannot drop nuke in here, I mean, you can nuke it, but nothing happened on the inside. The ghouls remain normal, at least for me. If you have different experience, please let me know, as I don't know what happened. It used to be an area perfect for a nuke, and inside there is from 40 to 50 ghouls. It's a little bit weird, because when you clear it up and you go back, sometimes more ghoul spawn from, like, out of nowhere. I don't know what determined this, but... Yeah, it, it's generally good spot, but cannot be nuked anymore or put it much lower on my list. What else is worth to mention, if you are a commando or rifleman build with a lot of damage, good ability to snipe from afar, the fissure sights are really nice, even though uh, Scorch are not the best source of experience, but you can snipe them all from one spot. You don't need to run too much around if you are rifle built. And Scorch Beast is giving a lot of experience, plus you will get those brains. Then if you can clear fissures fast and jump from fissure to fissure and you don't mind spending some caps on fast travel, uh, then you can do a fissure rotation and those sites respawn every 10 minutes even without server hopping. What's another advantage if you are playing on a public server and let's say all the super mutants will be cleared, killed, too much competition on West Tech or Capitol building on Barrows, then you can always go and uh, jump those fissure sites. Unfortunately, I do not have for you any like crazy new spot for farming experience as at this moment at least it's very similar to how it was before the Wastelanders. And if you want to see me farming uh, all those spots and see how does it look like in practice, then I will be doing live stream Friday evening. And during the Friday live stream, I will be farming experience as hard as possible because we need it for those incoming legendary pair cards. And I'm going after this experience. Now to quickly summarize the topic, get your buffs ready now, use them during double experience weekend. The best spot is still West Tech plus National Isolated Radio Array and Hunter's Vile. Those three, it's number one, without nuke, without anything required. If you want to use nuke, the number one is Barrows. You nuke Barrows south and you go through the Barrows north to avoid any radiation. If you are a power armor users, 
you nuke White Spring and you farm all those glowing ghouls in circle, then just go back to main menu and rejoin the same server. How you achieve that? If you have a friend on the server, you can rejoin the same server. Or, or if it's your private server, then you can just basically go back to your private server. There's no problem. And good spot, but not as good as I wanted it to be. Just your capital building and all the fissure site. And if you know something really good for experience, that I didn't list it in this video, please go into the comment section and share it with us. I would like to know it and check it out myself. Otherwise, happy grinding and see you guys in the next video.